All right, hey everybody, welcome back for another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. Uh, today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I, as you can see, have a helicopter uh, loaded up in the sim, and uh, I'm doing the best I can to uh, try to get that integrated into my simulator setup. So, uh, we are on the ground here at John Wayne. Uh, and we're going to give this uh, Gimbal G2 a try. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I was a helicopter pilot in the Army, uh, but I gave that up three years ago. I flew Blackhawks uh, H60s. So uh, I'm excited to be able to fly helicopters again in the flight simulator, seeing as I don't have the opportunity to fly them anymore in real life. So uh, let's see how this goes. So part of uh, getting things integrated here is uh, setting up the pop-out pop panel manager and seeing if I can get... So I have this uh, panel popped out. Um, I'm not able to pop out this panel, and for whatever reason, I'm not able to get this GTN 750 working. So I don't know what's going on with those, but uh, we're going to do without for now. So the pop-out panel manager is doing what it's supposed to do. Pops the two panels out. It puts them in place. This is the uh, this is not the stock Microsoft uh, H2 gimbal. This is actually one that I downloaded from flightsim.to. I'll put the link in the description. But this is the HCG version, and it's their 40th anniversary edition. So they had this helicopter ready to go before uh, Microsoft Flight Sim came out with native helicopter support. However, uh, it required this Airland FS, and uh, since Microsoft now has native helicopter support, you no longer need to use that. So. I don't know if the fact that this is new, if maybe that is why this is a new version. I don't know if that's why my GTN 750 isn't working, but uh, we'll figure that one out later. And we're just going to fly it as is for now. So we got the panels popped out. Um, what I do find is that my bezels here work just fine like they're supposed to. Um, so bezels are good. My uh, uh, knobster. You can see my heading indicator there spins like it's supposed to. Um, you can see the altitude uh, pre-select works. But then when I go to course and barrow, um, I don't have the ability to change my barometric altimeter. Now on the right panel here, I think you can see that. Yeah, so on my right panel, um, you can see that when I spin the altimeter, it does change the altimeter setting. Uh, so it seems like it's just the... Uh, the G3X touch in the gimbal itself that's not working. The uh, the altitude al altimeter information is, isn't working. So with that out of the way, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can give this a go. So as I mentioned, I haven't flown helicopters in three years. So that combined with the fact that it's a simulator, that combined with the fact that uh, the Blackhawk has a whole lot of stability augmentation, so it takes a lot of the hard work out for you and all of that combined with the fact that this gimbal h uh, gimbal g2 is a french helicopter so uh the rotor spins the opposite direction which means the uh rotor pedal so typically when you pull in collective you got to give left pedal and this aircraft seeing as the main rotor blade spins in the opposite direction you got to provide the opposite pedal right right pedal to uh, counter that torque so uh, all of those things said, that's the disclaimer that this probably isn't going to be pretty, but let's give it a go. We do have uh, head tracking set up here as well, and we're flying doors off. So I think we're good to come up to a hover. I knew it wasn't going to be pretty. All right, we're going to set it... I'm just going to turn, do a pedal turn to face the runway, and then we'll set it back down. Uh, 
coming back down. I just want to check to make sure that my throttle is full open. The governor should be good to go. And, uh, all right, I think we're going to call that good to go. Coming up. And we're going to be on the go here. Coming forward. So the airspeed's alive, the attitude indicator's working just fine. So it looks like it's just the altimeter on that uh, G3X that isn't doing what it's supposed to do. I can see I'm pulling in about 45% power right here, and the rotor's in the green, we're looking good. So I'm gonna pull in some more power. And get a good, good climb rate going here. We're in our yellow, uh, Caution range, which is probably a five minute climb power limit. So, a few things that I was trying to screw around with while I was trying to get this thing working is the trim settings. So, what I'm finding is that I'm able to get my trim hat here on the stick working so that I can toggle it forward for trim forward and back, um, and I can toggle it left and right for trim left and right. But for whatever reason, I'm trying to get just a like reset, like a trim reset. Uh, but I, I want to be able to move the stick in a certain direction and then just press the button like you do in a real helicopter and then let go. And all of the trim automatically sets itself to where you put it. I haven't figured out how to get that working yet. For instance, if I, uh, so right now we have a turn going. If I pull aft on the stick and level us out, and then press that button and see it gets all jacked up. All jacked up. So I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. So anyways, we'll get control of the helicopter again. So that's an un unusual attitude recovery, which is an actual uh, maneuver that they have have you do in flight school where uh, the instructor will ask you to look a certain direction and bend over to pick up a water bottle or something and he'll put the helicopter in a uh, unusual attitude and he'll say look up fix the helicopter and you gotta get it going and stable again so I'm trying to get this uh, trim all sorted out again There we go. That's about trimmed out for hands off. So now I can be hands off. I do have to keep my hand on the collective. Oh, actually, there it goes. The collective doesn't, I don't have any collective trim. And the collective that I made, my prototype collective is uh, made of wood. So it's not the lightest thing. Yeah, now the trim is all jacked up. So whatever that button is that I'm pressing, and I tried setting that button myself. If I go to general options, there goes my collective. It slams all the way down. So if I go into control options and type in, so if I go to my helicopter T1600 T and if I type in trim, so set rotor longitudinal trim and set rotor lateral trim. I can press the button and it's joystick button three, validate that. But for whatever reason, it's not working. So I don't know what's up with that. I'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, figure it out after. Pulling some collective because I forgot that I left it down. Yeah, so collective trim would be great. I need to figure that out still. I don't know what the governor's doing here. All right, let's try to make an approach.
spending too much time screwing with my collective. Alright, well, we're obviously way too fast here. One of the ways you lose airspeed quickly in a helicopter is a hockey stop. That right there. Let's get ourselves back over to the numbers. And we're actually not too far. Like I said, it wasn't going to be pretty, but... We get ourselves stabilized at a hover, or we touch down. And we're down. Alright, let's do another takeoff. We'll do a uh, max performance takeoff this time. So we're going to pull in 100% power. And we're going to climb straight up without accelerating forward, back, left, or right. And we're going to keep the nose pointing down the runway. Looking for 100% coming in. Still pulling, still pulling. A little bit of rotor droop there, so I'm pulling in less power. And we get to 100 feet, which we're way over that. You would go nose forward. We're looking to accelerate to about 100 knots without drooping the rotor like we're doing like crazy here. I'm a little surprised the rotor RPM doesn't pick up quickly. I have to reduce collective for the, the rotor RPM to come back into the green. All right, we're going to come right. I need to uh, move my person's view forward so that I'll, I can look to the right without seeing this uh, ape pillar there. I'll do that when we get back on the ground. So I'm looking for a thousand feet. I want to be up at a thousand feet for a traffic pattern altitude. We want to be at about 80 to 90 knots for the traffic pattern. I should be able to let go, although I did not trim the aircraft very nicely, but it actually looks like it's not far. All right, so now we're going to take the power out. We're going to start descending and decelerating. Start coming to the right. We want, uh, so I was a little high to start. We want to be at 700 feet uh, on the base leg. We're still coming down. We're looking good. Getting a little slow, so I can let up on that half cyclic like I was pulling. All right, so now we're getting a little low. So I'll pull in a little bit of collective, and we're just going to keep this turning. I want to keep about 70 knots here, 60 to 70 knots here on final. That descent looks good. Now we're just looking to pick up about the glide slope, and we're going to shoot this approach straight to the numbers. The power is continuing to come out, cyclic continuing to come back. We want to get ourselves aligned on the runway. I want to keep that airspeed coming back because I'm still moving a little quick. Power is continuing to come out. I still got aft cyclic to keep that slow coming. Yep, now we're, we're getting too slow. We pulled ourselves back to a hover. Coming forward. We want to maintain a constant angle as if there was a piece of string from us to the numbers we want to follow that piece of string all the way down and the goal is right so once we're getting into the ground we're going to need to pull a little bit of power to because as we start slowing down we get slower than transitional transitional lift, and once we get that slow, we need to pull in power to stop our rate of descent. All right. Well, again, ugly, but we're down. All 
A uh, couple things I want to uh, bring up the FPS just so that you guys can get an idea of uh, what we're doing here and then I'll show the graphics settings real quick general options so we are DLSS balanced we're DX12 and we're on high graphics settings right now and we got about 30-ish frames So what did we say here? We said we wanted to move ourselves forward. Can I save that right there as a... Uh, so if I go... So I don't know how to make I don't know how to make it stop resetting. So let's see. If I pull up track IR. So when I hit button one or button two. I want it to start and stop, but I don't want it to center, so I don't know why it's centering. Yeah, I don't know. But maybe I'll give up on that again. Okay, come pulling in power. Actually, let's let's do a. Uh, so this time we're going to do a. Um, I'm trying to remember what we called it. Level accelerating or something like that. We're gonna pull in just enough power that we can hover, but not take off. So we're pulling in just enough power for a 10 foot hover. There's about a three foot hover. So there's about 10 feet right there. So I'm gonna hold that power setting. I'm looking at about 40, 42%. So I'm gonna pull, okay, let's say 45. So I'm going to pull no more than 45%. And we're going to take off like that. The way that this works is because we're sitting here. Uh, we're in ground effect, so it takes less power to hover. However, uh, we are below effective translational lift. So as soon as we get our forward airspeed up, so I'm going to give a little bit of forward cyclic. We might get a little bit of a dip as we start accelerating forward. But then eventually we'll hit about 16 knots or so. And at 16 knots, the helicopter is going to bounce off of the ground. Not bounce. It, it's going to leap off of the ground, I should say, like that. So we pulled no more. Um, my power is at 41%. And we were able to take off just fine. So what that right there tells me is that um, when the developers did the uh, flight model for this aircraft, uh, they did a pretty good job. All right, so I'm going to pull in normal power, do a normal pattern. Next thing we're going to try is an auto rotation. So we're going to try to do a 1,000 foot pattern, uh, traffic pattern, 1,000 foot traffic pattern. And uh, you can tell I'm thinking too hard here, <laughs> focusing too hard on flying the aircraft. So 1,000 feet, 90 to 100 knots. And then when we're stabilized on final, we're going to maintain that 1,000 feet all the way to final. We're not going to descend in our, in our base turn. Um, when we're stabilized at 1,000 feet on final, I'm going to cut the throttle to idle. Uh, so assuming that the governor stops trying to govern because the throttle's at idle, um, we should start dropping out of the sky, first of all, because we're not giving the engine any gas. Um, so the first thing you're going to start seeing the rotor droop, the rotor RPM. Okay, there's a thousand feet. Little power coming out. The rotor's going to droop. I'm going to have to take out all of the collective to uh, prevent the rotor from drooping any further. I'm going to extend this pattern to keep explaining this. Take out all the collective to stop the rotor from drooping. 
With the collective all the way on the ground, you're gonna see rotor start coming up. The rotor RPM is gonna come up really fast because uh, as we're falling, air is flowing up through the rotors and it's gonna blow through the rotor. It's gonna blow the rotors like a pinwheel. So you're gonna see a rotor overspeed and I'm gonna pull in a little bit of collective to stop that rotor speed, that overspeed from happening. We're looking for a thousand feet here. We're a little high. I'm gonna have to hold. All right, we're a little high, so I'm gonna start the maneuver early. I'm gonna hold 100 knots because right at the end, we're gonna decelerate at about 100 feet above the ground. Power's coming out. Power's out. Rotor starts drooping, so I take the collective out. And I'm trying to hold 100 knots. Not too fast, because we'll increase our rate of descent. Not too slow, because we won't have enough airspeed to, uh, to recover. We're stabilized, we're looking good here. Our rotor never recovered. Our rotor speed is still low. So I'm maintaining 90 knots all the way down. And right at the end, I'm going to flare. That's gonna decelerate us. And then apply a bunch of collective right at the bottom. And that is supposed to cushion our landing. And as I'm pulling collective, you see the rotor droop. Oh, that was almost a rollover, but I pulled whatever uh, collective I had left to stop ourselves from rolling over. And now you see the rotor blades uh, spool down to idle. So that's an auto rotation. That one wasn't pretty, but we survived it. So the uh, throttle's coming back up. That should get the governor going again. We're gonna try another one of those, because that one was, uh, it wasn't pretty. All right, the governor, we should see that uh, needle come back into the green. There it is. All right, and we're just gonna do a normal takeoff. Uh, so we're gonna do a little bit of stick forward as we come up. And we're gonna slide to the right to come back over the runway. Pulling in some power. Really need to figure out some uh, collective friction. Because without it, I have to constantly keep my hand on the collective, which is kind of annoying. Normally when we fly, we guard it, but this is a little more than guarding it. All right. Coming right, gonna do a thousand foot pattern again. Get it trimmed up for hands off. Little power. I guess that's how I'll have to do it. I'll have to lean forward. All right, climb still looking good. We're a little fast, so I'm gonna slow it back. 100 knots is fine, but I'm gonna get that climb, climb moving. Let's, we're gonna make it even harder on ourselves now. We're gonna initiate the maneuver in the downwind. All right, two autos going to idle. We lost power, the collective's coming down and we're gonna beeline it to the airport without dropping the nose too low because then we're just gonna accelerate our rate of descent. Come on, come on. We need to maintain that airspeed. We're not gonna make the uh, the runway, so we're gonna go for the highway. We're gonna flare. Nope. So I'm flaring too late is what I'm what I'm seeing. So I keep ballooning back up every time I pull in collective. So I need to manage how much collective I'm pulling. All right, rotors, uh, throttles coming back in. We're gonna do one more. I made it too difficult on myself there. Initiating it in the downwind. All right, rotors in the green. We're coming up. See if we can 
come up a little slower this time so that we're not uh whoa I'm gonna blame the controls on that one I felt like I was pulling in uh, pulling in enough collective but it wasn't coming up so then I pulled in a handful of collective and up we went all right, so we're gonna put it down on the numbers here, practice a little uh, little landing, and then we're gonna do a proper takeoff, nice and gentle. And because I don't have patience to get ourselves up to the numbers, we're gonna just set it down right here. All right, so the goal here is to pull in collective right up until you get light on the skids there. And then pull in just a little bit more, which it, when the nose starts coming, you counteract that with, with pedal a little more, a little more power, it's gonna need a little more pedal. And you're moving the cyclic stick to keep yourself from rolling left, right, forward or aft. So you should be able to hang out, like right now, we're just about hovering. If I pull in just a little bit more, there we are. So just practice picking it up nice and slow like this. And that's kind of partially how you're going to learn to to hover. So now I'm just going to pull in so we can see we're at like 38% power here. So if I pull in just another couple percent, we'll come up to a hover. All right, and we're up. Let's pull it up to 10 feet and stop that uh, aft acceleration. It's just little, little movements to keep ourselves where we want us. I guess it was easier with uh, without looking around. All right, let's come up to the numbers. And we're going to hover right on top of the numbers. So another maneuver. So here's some fun maneuvers for control touch. A maneuver we used to practice was uh, acting like you had a gun out the front of the helicopter and you want to keep the gun pointed at your target. So we're going to act like that 20 is our target. And we are going to circle around the 20 at about 30 feet or so, no more. And we want to keep that 20 off of the nose. And the faster we start to go, the more forward cyclic it's going to require because the centripetal force wants to push us away from the 20. So we're keeping that 20. Oh, I'm out of pedal authority. <laughs> I need to get I need to adjust the sensitivity of the pedals to give ourselves a little more pedal authority so I don't run out. I my my right foot is to the floor and I have no more right pedal. Alright, so we're gonna get out of that. We're gonna come come back down to the numbers. Whoops. Crash. Another drill we used to do would be to hover our way down the center line of the runway and do 360 turns with the tail rotor, but keep movement down the runway. So we're going to start moving forward down the runway. We want to be at about 10 feet or so, maybe 20 feet for this. And we want to keep moving down the center line, but we want to slide. And we're going to come back the other way. Trying to keep moving straight down the center line. Oops, don't want to do that. Thankfully, it skids in there. 
they don't have much traction, otherwise we could be rolling ourselves over. Now if we had people in the back seats, and if we were a little more stabilized in this, they could actually bring us around so that we're flying backwards down the runway. Whoa. Let's try that one more time. Let's do a right turn, right pedal. We want to be moving down the runway. Come on. Down the runway. <laughs> Without rolling over. All right, let's get out of here. Power's coming in, and we're on the go. Yeah, that takes a lot of focus. I am gonna say that the uh, realism of this helicopter model is where it needs to be. That felt really good. Like I said, I haven't done this in years, but that felt, that felt really good. The sim we used to always say the simulator is a little harder to fly than the real-world air aircraft just because you don't have all of those visual and uh, flying by the seat of, the seat of your pants cues. But um, but this feels pretty, re pretty realistic. Alright, we're gonna do an auto rotation coming in this way. Alright, power. Throttle is going to idle. We gotta pull the collective all the way down. And we wanna maintain. See, the trim is what's screwing us up there. Yeah, that's not so realistic, I will say. Deceleration. That, so that one felt good, and that's fine. You're allowed to slide. Now you take the collective out, and you see the weight of the helicopter comes onto the skids, and we slow down. So that's how you save yourself if the engine were to fail while you're flying. What I don't like in terms of the realism, the throttle's coming back in. We watch the RPMs come back up. What I don't like about the realism is when I take the collective out, the nose is dropping forward like crazy. And I'm pulling full aft on the stick. And it's it's like there's not enough authority to pick the nose up. Um, if I look at the sensitivity of the controls, so we're going, it's not like we're clamping ourselves, but the aircraft is actually running out. The aircraft is actually running out of authority. Where are, I want to see my rudder. Uh, oh, I need to go find the pedals, pedal sensitivity. So that's what's going on. So I, I clipped us off there. So I'm going to get rid of that extremity dead zone. That way we're not, uh, Oh, and that can even give us more authority. Let's start with that. So maybe... All right. Back in the aircraft. Throttle's 100%. We're rudder in the green. Coming up. Point the nose back down the runway. Coming up. You know what else we should try? We should try doing a slope landing. So to do that, we need to find a slope. Then after a slope landing, we do what's called a pinnacle landing. Slope landing is self-explanatory. A pinnacle landing is one of these buildings. You're setting one skid on top of the building, 
and hovering there so that if there were people on top of the building that you were trying to extract, you're, uh, you're able to kind of hover with one skid on the building if there wasn't enough room for both skids. You're able to pick those people up. So I'm, of course, we're in California where it's pretty flat. Oh, there, that looks like a slope. All right, power's coming out. We're gonna hockey stop ourselves here. Well, that's quite an aggressive slope. So let's, uh, how about that right there? Power. The, uh, the feel of the collective is also, uh, not quite what I was used to, so that's messing with me a bit. Like, knowing where Hover Collective is. So that's about the slope we're looking for. Alright, so we want to... Alright, come up to a safe 10-foot Hover to start. The problem with slopes is you got to be really good at hovering. And we haven't quite gotten very good in the simulator yet. But we're going to try it regardless. So we want to interest... Typically, you only do slopes when you have somebody in the back seat as well to, uh, at least we did, to help guide you into it. But, but what we're trying to do here is get ourselves lined up on the slope. We want to very gently let ourselves down until the upslope skid is touching. And then we want to let the collective out just enough that we're able to hold ourselves on that upslope skid. Now you don't want to you don't want to do any of that because that's how you roll yourself over. All right, we're getting close though. All right, so we got the we got that skid down. It's just not planted. Now as soon as we start getting out of control, you want to pull in some power and get yourself away from the slope. Get ourselves settled down. This doesn't seem very sloped right here. We need to come forward towards that tree. Spice things up. All right, here's our slope. Hold ourselves right here. Ah, come on, come on. All right, up uphill. I'm just gonna plant that. I'm going for it. All right, the skid is down. This is not going to happen. So we start to put the, some weight on that skid. And now we should be able to balance here. There we go. Now we're planted on that skid. So we're able to balance here and teeter on that skid. And now we slowly let collective out. And we're going to feel the right skid, the left skid start coming down. And as we do, we want to put right cyclic to further plant that right skid onto the slope and to keep ourselves level as we slowly take more and more power out. If you look at my percentage power, you can see it slowly coming down as I let the collective out and my stick is going further and further to the right. And I'm going to do this until the cyclic is, until the collective is all the way down. Now my stick is all the way to the right. Oops. And when we start rocking like that, I pull a little bit more collective in to, uh, to slow that rock. My cyclic is just about all the way to the right. Now I'm going to continue to take the collective out. And we should... So is that... So I think that left skid is down, but because I still have cyclic into the slope, we're holding ourselves here. As I take the cyclic out of the slope, um, we should level out, but it looks like it's going to start us sliding down the hill. So we'll see. So the cyclic is centered, collective is all the way down, and we can see we landed on what isn't a whole lot of a slope, but... <laughs> oh man, I really wanted that. It looks like I just made it seem hard for no reason. You know what? 
screw it. If you guys want out, you can turn the video off. We're gonna do. We're gonna. We're gonna nail this slope. Come on. <laughs> All right. Get facing the. Oh. All right. Abandoning. <laughs> Abandoning the slope. Because you can only do so much of that before you're like, all right, I need a break. Let's try a pinnacle. Because if the slope wasn't hard enough, let's make things harder. So, at least when you get away from the slope, though, you're able to relax for a second. And that can help with the fatigue. All right, we're going to choose one of these buildings facing the tower. Power's coming out. We're going to start hockey stopping our way into our building. We'll choose one of the bigger buildings there. That guy straight off the nose. All right, so we're going to continue moving in on him. All right, and we want to be about 10 feet above him like we are right now. Looking good. So up, up, up. So how do we think this is going to go? Disaster? So the other hard part about a pinnacle is half of your rotor system is in ground effect. The other half is out of ground effect. So as a result of that, the, r the left side of my rotor system here is going to be more efficient than the right. So it's going to take left cyclic stick to keep us from, uh, so, the, so the pinnacle is actually trying to push us away from it, unless I do uh, cyclic stick into it. All right, we're going to take a lap, because that got challenging pretty quickly. <laughs> I think, uh, I think I want myself to be, uh, Good at flying helicopters still, but I don't think I'm there. <laughs> Honestly, if I were to fly in a helicopter like this in real life, I don't think it's going to be much prettier. The Blackhawk, like I mentioned at the beginning, does have a whole bunch of stability augmentation that takes a lot of the hard work out. And the more fatigued you get from practicing the hover the harder it is to do this stuff all right we are going to inch our way up to it because it's impossible to do this when you can't see because we don't have a back seater so i'm not going to be able to do this if i can't see the hill or the the building Come on, we're close. There it is. <laughs> All right, let's do one more auto. That was a low rotor alarm, it sounded like. Frame rates look fine, though. I don't know uh, if you guys have been able to see that good. Alright, here's our thousand feet. We wanna we wanna be trimmed out. Okay. 
Okay, we're coming to the right. We want to keep our air speed up. We want to keep our altitude up. Why? Oh, I'm letting the collective down. All right. Throttle is going to idle. We're going to take the collective out to stop the rotor from drooping. We want to hold that 100 knots. We've got about a 900 foot per minute rate of descent. We get to about a 300 to 100 feet, we want to start the flare. Here's our deceleration. And then we want to start to cushion with the collective right when we get to the ground. And we're pulling all of the energy out of that rotor system while we touch the skids down. I don't know how I feel about the uh, the dynamics of the aircraft in the auto rotation. It doesn't uh, doesn't feel quite quite perfectly real. It's close, but I don't know if it's quite there. And especially when you get uh, get close to the ground like that, I don't know. It's tough to say. Come coming up. Ugly. I want to do one more. Wow, when I pull power in, the rotor seriously droops. It's like the thing doesn't like pulling more than 65% power. And that sounds like a low rotor RPM alarm. I hear like a buzzing noise. All right, coming up on a thousand feet, we got about a hundred knots. Can I see the airport? Yeah. Well, we know we got the fuel made. We need to take the throttle to idle. Throttle's going idle. Collective comes out. That nose drops immediately. So I want to hold a 100 knot attitude. So that right there feels pretty good. Now that's what it, but we're descend, we're decelerating. So we're going to try to flare earlier this time. Although I swear to God, it's supposed to be at about 100 feet. getting too slow here. This is too slow. Okay, we're going to start the flare. And power is coming into cushion without lifting ourselves back up because we want to cushion ourselves. Yeah, just it so everything feels about realistic, but there's too much inertia in the rotor blades. When you pull in a whole bunch of rotor like that, you don't lift yourself back up again in a real helicopter. It, there's just not enough power and inertia in the rotor blades. You're gonna you, you cushion yourself onto the ground and that's it. So uh, that would be the only thing I'd like to see them fix. Other than that, everything else feels good. So uh, this was fun. I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's been, like I said, years since I've flown a helicopter. So this is a blast absolutely love it. I love the fact that uh, <laughs> my setup is a little janky right now. I got C-clamps on C-clamps and uh, a paper, t paper towel roll wrapped around. I guess I can show you the... Uh... So I took one of the uh, uh, attachments to the Logitech 
took this guy and I electrical taped him to a bunch of just project sticks that I had. They're like half inch by half inch. I put four of them together, electrical taped them all together and wrapped a paper towel roll around them. So this is my collective. Uh, it's definitely a prototype. It's heavy, but it does the job. The fact that it's heavy means it doesn't stay in place when I pull it up. There's not enough friction. Uh, so I'm hoping that the 3D printed one that I have on the way is going to be lighter so that maybe it'll stay in place and I can take my hand off of it. But uh, we won't know until it gets here. Um, yeah, other than that, I have the thing clamped to my chair. Uh, it's not the most stable thing in the world, but it seems like it's doing the job for how much force I'm pulling on the collective here. But, uh, still want to get, uh, still want to get this, uh, uh, GTN 750 figured out. I wish I could pop out this panel, too, because it, it stinks having to continue to keep it in my sight on the screen here. I really want it on my touchscreen panels. So, to the developer of this, uh, aircraft, if I could pop this out like I could pop this out, that would be awesome. So please, please uh, make that make that change. That'd be awesome. Happy to donate uh, to the project if if you could do that. I'll probably leave a comment on your page as well. Other than that, uh, I'm also curious to see. My guess would be this G2. Uh, the the handling dynamics are probably exactly the same as the uh, as the Microsoft one. I don't know. The fact that it definitely is a little bit different. Um, the fact that it's got these pop-out panels. You don't get these these pop-out panels here with the might with the Asobo version of this aircraft. So I don't know if they handle differently. Um, I'll have to keep flying them both to, to see. But the goal would be to continue to have this set up like it is. This is, I'm going to call this final. Um, and the goal would be for all of this stuff here to be set up around the panel here. Um, then I would be happy with the panel. So it looks like I need a... Airspeed indicator, uh, vertical speed indicator, an altimeter. So I already have my altimeter here. Uh, I need an attitude indicator down here, and then a horizontal situation indicator. Be really cool if I could pop out these emergency lights too, but that's probably a lot asking a lot. I would think this could be pop outable. I don't know what these are. Anyhow. Awesome stuff. Very happy with it. I finally have, as a former helicopter pilot, I finally have helicopters integrated into my simulator. And I'm stoked about it. And the system is performing nicely at about 30 frames per second on high. And uh, so we're, I didn't mention, we're here at um, uh, Orange County Airport again in the LAX area. Um, so it's a it's a pretty graphics heavy spot to be in. So 26 on the ground is is respectable for five monitors. But uh, I I hope everybody learned something. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.